We are at the Sharpville Memorial where the president of the country, Saul Ramaphosa, alongside the premier of the province of Gauteng, Mr. Panyaza Lusufi, will lay wreaths here at the memorial where the president will then later on deliver the main key address of the human rights commemoration and in particular those who were assassinated in 1960 when they were marching against the unjust past laws of the apartheid regime and those subsequently who passed away the following days after 1960. But when you look at the people of the Val Triangle today, they are faced with different struggles. Struggles of sewage, struggles of lack of water and sanitation, struggles of lack of service delivery. Some may question that were the struggles of those in 1960 in vain, looking at the deplorable conditions the people of this area of the Val Triangle currently live under. But the man in charge of changing their lives for the past eight months or so, Mr. Panyazalu Sufi, when you look at the lives of the people of this area, when you look at Sharpville, the Val Triangle, were those people's struggles in vain in 1960? Thank you so for the opportunity. Surely not. Uh, if you do take into consideration something that is very, very key, which is the human rights of all those people, their right to access quality education, their right to access medical uh, facilities, their right to choose uh, uh, where you want to live, the, the rights to choose where you want to stay. If you compare it with those days of Group Areas Act and you compare it with those days where people could not even go to a school that is nearby here, when you come here in the morning and see children of this particular area going to any school of their choice, going to any health facility of their choice, and also going to do whatever that they want to do without any restriction or being asked for any documents, whether they stay in the right area or not, you can see that indeed uh, we've made major, major, major meaningful progress. Obviously, there will be challenges there and there. Uh, we will not uh, defeat all those things at once. Uh, there will be challenges as issues they've raised, either challenges of sewer, which is something that we've invested almost 3.5 five billion rands to overhaul the sewer system. When you came here for the first time, you don't see sewer flowing purely because of the intervention that we've made. Secondly, as a provincial government, we've taken over the roads uh, that were bad. We picked up 40 west roads that were bad in this community. We've converted those roads to be better roads. When you came here, you'll see Unlike last year, there are no longer potholes because we have taken over that particular responsibility. But we'll continue to improve this community. But what is key, it's not about the tangible thing, it's about the rights our people have and the pieces of legislation that are currently in Parliament to enhance uh, the areas that we wanted to do. For example, the National Health Insurance Act, which is on the desk of the President that have gone through all the relevant things. We'll ensure that whether you've got a medical aid, you don't have a medical aid, you'll be in a position to access uh, 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 uh. You'll be in a position to access any medical facility you want to access, which is very, very important. Some human rights that you can't take away from our people. We've got uh, the education uh, 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 amendment bill that is also uh, at the doorstep of the NCOP. If passed, everyone will choose the school they want to without any restrictions and other things and many other pieces of legislation that are currently in parliament so it's an affirmation that this day it's a very important day this day was not a day we can regret that it happened this day cannot be a day where we can say it was in vain this day cannot be a day where we say that we don't know where we're going as a country yeah where we come from it's bad painful but where we're going we're quite excited that we'll have a better south africa that our children will be proud of what is human rights without land, without jobs, with an economy of the Val Triangle that is, is, is essentially on its knees and has crumbled, where people are unemployed, where people struggle? You speak about the roads coming in, Mr. Lusufi, but it looks as if some of the roads were just fixed during the course of the week upon your arrival with the president today. Not necessarily. As I said, there are 40 roads. Uh, we took over 40 roads as the provincial government. Obviously, we have to start somewhere and end somewhere. So if we started somewhere, we'll say, why you started there? If we end here, we we'll say, why are you ending here? But we have to start somewhere. We took 40 west roads, uh, roads that we could not even pass uh, as a provincial government because we recognize the difficulties uh, that this particular uh, uh, municipality is going through. We are supporting them, we are giving guidance where we can intervene and intervene. We have chosen the area of roads, we have chosen the area of cleaning this community, we have also chosen the area of providing electricity. The communities there, for the last three years, they didn't know what is electricity. Not because of load shedding, because we've got transformers that were either stolen, vandalized or destroyed. They have electricity now because of our intervention. You can say the issue of land. Uh, land is something that belongs to our people. We will be relentless in trying to reclaim that particular land. But you can't say if we have not reclaimed land, it means 
we must not celebrate this day. We must not observe this day because the land is still where it is in other things. I think it's myopic, it's narrow in its approach when we, all of us, agree that the land must return it to the rightful owners. But we're not wanting to return the land for its rightful owner for purpose of having land. We have intervened as a province. Uh, what we are doing now, we're saying we've bought lots and lots of land in this province. We are putting water, we are putting sewer, we are putting electricity, we are putting new roads so that people on their own can build their own houses, which is really believe is empowering rather than be restricted to an RDP houses that may be small for your family and might not assist you. So this is a kind of intervention that we're having as a provincial government. Just to observe the importance of this day or be inspired by events of this particular day so that as a provincial government we can proceed with the work that we want to do in this area. But is it not an indictment against the incumbent leadership of the country, taking it back from 1994, those who took over the levers of power in the African National Congress and subsequent other uh, political formations that worked with the ANC and the National Government of Unity and subsequent elections? There are a number of high-profile politicians within the government today who grew up in this area. Your people like Oscar Mabuyan, who grew up in the specific area of Shavville. But if you look at Shavville today, and the type of condition it is. You grew up in Tembisa. You saw the struggles of the people of this area. Paul Mashatile and Alexandra in areas such as Atridgeville as well. You come to this area. You're Jacob Cowes. But th this condition of government here is just deplorable. People are living in abject poverty in certain areas. That is why you can check the last two states of the province's address. What is it that we have elevated in those species? Townships, informal settlement and hostels. Because we acknowledge that. If you can't improve townships, if you can't improve informal settlement, if you can't improve hostels, that's the end of all of us. Because these are the areas that bore the brand of apartheid system, and these are areas that need development. We have to ensure that those townships, those informal settlements, and informal settlements are improved. And we are working very hard to improve those uh, particular sectors. If you can check the new townships that have uh, uh, developed, when we you mentioned the names of people that have mentioned. There's a township called Bramfish. It was not there. It's there now. It's better. It's not, if you compare it to the apartheid system, it's far better because you've got facilities that we need. So we have to balance all these things. But the improvement of townships, the improvement of informal settlement, the improvement of hostels, it's something that we've prioritized. Myself, I'm saying we are the generation that must decrease the number of informal settlements rather than increase them. We are the generation that must improve townships rather than leave them in the bad state that they are. We are the generation that must ensure that the hostels are in a better state than they are now, purely because we understand the issues that we've just raised. Thank you very much, Mr. Panyazal Sufi. That is the Premier of the Gauteng province. But what's your budget to fix uh, the hostels in uh Gauteng? There are about 60 hostels and the living conditions there are just not... In, they are inhumane, basically. There are five hostels that are owned by the provincial government the, that have put almost uh, 300 million to improve them. The rest, local government and the municipalities of those, must, uh, must improve them. But if they fail, we are ready to take them over. They must tell us that they are failing and we will take them over and improve them. You have never thought that the hostel will have a free Wi-Fi. You never thought the hostel will have CCTVs. You never thought the hostel will have warm water. You never thought the hostel will not have broken windows. Uh, we, that's are what done. Now. we are campaigning now. But that's the time. It's not the time to campaign. Mlungi Simawa also is wrong to saying that you failed hostels. No, no, no. It's not my hostel. If they want me to, to, to improve that hostel, hand, them, hand it over to me, I'll improve it. Thank you very much, Mr. Panyazal Sufi. That is the premier of the province of Gauteng. Panyazal Sufi essentially speaking of how they are trying to improve the lives of the people of the Val uh, Triangle. You've seen how these people are living in abject poverty. At times, Mfuleni municipality has failed to provide the basic necessity of water, sanitation. They are basically living sometimes with sewage running through the streets. The Human Rights Commission had to come in and intervene. SNDF as well had to come in and intervene in an area which uh, pretty much shaped the struggles of the people for South Africa's freedom in 1994. 1960 was one of the turning points in South Africa's liberation struggle but today the people of this area of shovel face a very bleak future.